Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Phoenix, and today we are going to be talking about Garmoth. No, not that Garmoth. That's Cronmoth. We'll be talking about Garmoth.com. Before I get started, if you guys do enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to that channel, and hit that notification bell to get notified when new videos go live. All right, a little disclaimer, I am not affiliated nor sponsored with Garmoth.com in any way, shape, or form, and the website is still in alpha as the developer is constantly doing maintenance and updates to it, but it is still very usable and very useful. If you guys do enjoy this website and do like the way it looks, please feel free to support the developer, buy him a coffee, donate a little bit, whatever you have. He is working very, very hard on making this an awesome tool for all of us BDO players. Okay, so here we are at Garmoth.com. First thing you're gonna wanna do is log in, right? You log in with using your Discord and you'll be taken to this main page. From here, we'll go to our profile and we'll fill out all things necessary, like our region. We wanna make sure the website knows what region we're in, our language, whether or not we have a value pack and what our family fame is. And this part is for tax purposes, uh, market tax purposes. Uh, you also can put in your family or character name, but it is not required. However, I choose to do so. It gives me a little flair for this website. But from there, we'll hit save. After you've done that, you'll see there's a little timer here where it shows you all the resets and whether it's going to be day or night. From there, we'll go to, uh, we'll hover over this market enhancing and tools, little toolbar right over here. And on the left hand side, we'll go to central market. So this central market has everything that is available on the BDO central market too. So you'll go here through all the tabs, but I find this to be very inefficient. And so I choose to use the search bar. <clears throat> all of the prices here are updated every two hours. However, when you click on an item, the prices are updated at that exact moment. The cool thing about this uh, central market page is that you can see the current price, the highest price, the lowest price, and the average sold daily. Now this is my favorite part of this feature because if you are looking for something specific or if you have pre-orders out, it can be very helpful for you to know how many are sold on average every day. So you can sort of estimate how long you'll be waiting to get your item. You can see all of the items selling and then all of the pre-orders. And then over here, you'll see the volume, how much has been trade per, traded per day for roughly a month, a little bit over a month, month and a couple weeks. But that's pretty much the breakdown of the central market. Oh, it can also be very useful if you are a life skiller because you can look up, for example, Valencia meals and you can see, okay, there's 1.8 million of them traded daily on average. And then you can compare that to your Calpheon meals. And oh, look, there's only 19,000 sold daily. So maybe your best bet is to figure out a way to make some Valencia meals. Those are just some of the uses for this central market. From there, we'll go over to Pearl items, which is actually in development. I did want to mention that. Uh, the developer is constantly working on updates, so hopefully we'll see some more about the pearl items soon. From there, we can go to Imperial, Imperial Crates, which is very useful, in my opinion, to life skillers. You can sort everything by what you are looking for, what pertains to you, whether you want to make the most profit or whether you want to make the most percentage of profit, which, of course, it's sweet and sour pickled vegetables. What else would it be? Uh, but there you go and put in your cooking mastery. If you have 800 cooking mastery, it will update everything based on that. And then your contribution points. If you have 400 contribution points, you can see that your estimated packing time and your profit goes up. So this is definitely something to pay attention to. From there, we'll go to the market watcher, which is a very nifty tool for the central market. And the way you use this is you can add your item, add your so we'll close, we'll get rid of this one, then we'll add our item. We'll search for an item. Let's say we want to do Urgons. We want to buy ourselves Tet Urgons, for example, but we don't want to spend any more than 2.9 billion. And there it goes. That's really nifty. So when the Tet Urgons drop below 2.9 billion, you can say ping me two times. The first time it drops below and the second time it drops below. When you hit start watching, 
Yep, it'll update there. And then when it does drop below 2.9, you will get a message in your Discord from the Garmoth bot telling you, hey, your Ergon shoes are under 2.9 billion. And then you'll be like, oh, cool, let me go buy them right now. And so that is why this is very useful. I guess there is a watch limit of one for now. Hopefully we can expect to have a few more items be added to the list uh, in the future. Okay. Now, if you are an enhancer or you just want to make your own gear, this part could be very useful for you. They have a built-in enhancement calculator. And as you can see, you can put in the fail stacks you use, the chances of success based on that fail stack. This is where you would add your fail stack. So the way this works is, let's say I want to enhance um, my boss weapon, okay? And I want to get it to Tet with a 75 fail stack. I have a 17% chance of success, and on average, it would take me six clicks. From here, I would go and put six, and you can simulate what it should look like. Keep in mind, this is all RNG, so not everything will go according to plan or according to what this website says. But if I click simulate, I failed all six times. I'll click simulate again, and look at that. On the sixth one, I've succeeded. So. Like I said, it's all RNG, but this is a good sort of gauge and a way to average things out if you're a math person or if you like to think about things logically, this could be very useful for you. When it comes to this area right here, uh, the chance calculator, in my opinion, is mostly useful if you are croning something. So if you are croning something with a fail stack of 75 and you've done it three times already, the next time your fourth attempt will be on average a uh, 42.8% chance of it actually going through based on the number of times that you have failed. The reason I say this is really good for crowning attempts is because as you are attempting, you are building fail stacks on here and this does not take into account the other fail stacks that you have built. All right, so that's our enhancing calculator. Then we go to our CAFRS calculator. Uh, this is very useful if you don't like doing math like me. I don't like doing math. So I'll go over here and I will say, okay, so my, let's say what I have, a Tet boss armor, and I'm trying to get it to Kafra level four. This is how many Kafras I'm going to need to get it from zero to four. Let's say I have 120 Kafras and 324 ancient spirit dust. It will then subtract my 120 plus the amount of Kafras I can make and give me the remaining Kafras I need to put in and the cost of the Kafras at the current market price. When you do put in your ancient spirit dust, keep in mind that the black stone cost is not calculated for that. In addition to all of these calculations, you will see the bonus stats that you will receive from getting it from zero to four. If you are interested in what is going to be at higher levels, just scroll down and there's all this extra information for you where you can see exactly the total you will need to get it to cap for 20 and how much you will need at every level, plus all of the stats. Over here, this is what you can use to calculate the amount of CAFRAs you can get uh, out of extracting your gear. Since you only get 95% of the CAFRAs back, this is a great way to calculate how much money you're losing by extracting the gear. So let's say my gear is at CAFRA level five and I wanna extract it all. I will lose 65 CAFRAs from that 5%. I will get this many CAFRAs at, and it will cost, it'll cost me to extract. <laughs> it'll cost me 120 million to extract the CAFRAs and I will lose a total of 301 million because of the lost CAFRAs over here. Okay, and that's all there is for CAFRAs. Now, when it comes to Cronstones, very, very simple. This chart over here just shows you everything on armors, necklaces, weapons, and pretty much all of your gear, how many Crons it will take to save your gear. So for example, if you are attempting to pen a Xarka main hand, then you will need 531 crons to attempt your pen and stop that gear from going from tet to try. Very simple, very straightforward, and everything's on here. All right, from here, we'll go to our tools, our PVE hit rate. And when you first click on this PVE hit rate, you will see all of these values are zero. So all you have to do is put in your accuracy values. So your sheet accuracy, crystals, alchemy stone food, elixir, all of those are pretty straightforward. You just hover over what you are using and you will be able to find the accuracy value then and there. 
when it comes to the guild buff if you aren't in a guild and they do have an accuracy buff it'll show as a percentage but it is not a percentage it is actually a static value so my guild buff is four percent but it's only four so i'll just put in four right there anything else you have your class passive this usually comes from the infinite mastery six uh, plus any other class passive that your specific class has when it comes to the on skill over here uh, I, the way I did this is I looked at my skill rotation and I found which skill had the lowest amount of accuracy that it gave me and then I put that one in uh, and that's just to give myself a little baseline. If you are using a combo and it, none of your skills have accuracy, feel free to put zero. But even if none of my skills had accuracy, I still put the lowest one that gave me some accuracy. Uh, the add-on self buff is from any add-ons that you have. Same thing with the evasion debuff. You'll see your total accuracy over here, and then you'll see all of these high-end uh, areas and your uh, hit rate for them. From there, you can go to the PvP hit rate over here. This is a, this can be a very useful tool for you guys. For me, I personally, I don't PvP that much, and I feel like uh, without a lot of profiles, it can be hard to figure out exactly what you're fighting uh, unless you go and ask your opponent hey what's your gear what's your evasion and I'm personally not going to do that but over here you see that everything from uh, your PvE hit rate has been added to the PvP hit rate as well so that saves you some time that's a really neat feature but over here there are different uh, sort of base characters uh, ninja has the highest evasion so here he is at his average um, evasion and everything and then as a guardian I will only hit them 50% of the time and they will dodge the other 50% of the time and so obviously I am not good against ninjas but that's a good way to look at it uh, if you're going against a soft cap DR build like me then you'll hit them all the time they won't dodge you and it might be a better matchup who knows all right, so that's pretty much it for PvP hit rate. You guys can feel free to mess around with the numbers and just kind of put different values in and see what you can do or your character can do against other PvPers. <laughs> okay, from there we'll go to our APDP brackets. And uh, this is pretty straightforward. It's just all of the brackets together. But something I do want to point out is this AP gain. The way it works is it takes the AP required to get from your AP to your AP goal and then the bonus AP of, for me, 15. And then it will add the 15 plus the 3 and that's how you get the 18 AP. When it comes to DP, it's the same thing. Your 4 DP required to get to the next bracket and plus that 1% bonus DR. And that is your total DP gain from where you are now to what your goal is. Now. For my all-time favorite and the best thing about Garmoth.com that I personally, I personally feel like it's the best thing, uh, is this grind tracker. This is so useful. Have you ever sat there and been like, ah, time to manually calculate everything? Or do you have like a million Excel sheets for all these different things? You don't have to worry about that anymore. This feels like an infomercial. <laughs> uh, but the first page you'll go to is summary. You're going to want to go to settings and uh, your text options should be saved from your profile. But if they're not, go ahead and input them again, hit save. And something new that's been added pretty recently is a character set. So you can add all your character or all the characters that you grind on or if you have different weapons and uh, make multiple of them. So that way, when you are grinding, you can keep track of which character you used and what gear they had. And you can see, oh, hey, even though my lawn has less gear than my guardian, she was able to grind more efficiently. Maybe I should use her for grinding. And that's pretty much what that's for. So I'm not going to save that because I already have my guardian. That's all I want to grind on. Uh, then you can go to custom prices. Uh, these are everything that you can get and you can put in a custom price i personally don't recommend it as everything gets pulled from the market and in game anyways but if that's something you want to do you can uh, this checkbox over here just signifies that this is going to get taxed so if you don't want it taxed you can untax it and that goes into your custom items as well all right now there are very or every uh, grind spot in the game is listed over here so you can look at all the solo spots you want, uh, any group spots, all of the HPMP map spots, anything else, and gathering. So gathering is something new that is being added to Garmoth.com as I speak. 
and uh, right now there's only lions, 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 but for all of those gathering um, and our life skillers out there in BDO, you are going to finally have a way to be able to track everything in one spot. I think this is going to be really great and really beneficial uh, as, you know, just keeping everything in one place is just, it's just great. But for now, all there is is lions. So when it comes to inputting what you like, you can go and hit your like thornwood. I like to grind up thornwood. So I'll go ahead and I'll star this and it will pop up under here in my favorites. So the way that you would add uh, loot and the way that you would track your grind is by going over here and hitting add. Then you can put in the amount of hours that you've spent there, the amount of aggress you've used, and then the amount of all the loot that you've received. You can keep track of the drop buffs that you've used and um, if there's an event going on, what pets you have. And then something I do really appreciate is having the tent buff. When you input the tent buff, it will actually calculate the cost of that tent buff for the amount of time that you've spent there. And then this is a good way to actually keep track of whether or not you are making more money with a tent buff than you are spending money on that tent buff. I hope that makes sense. Uh, you can also hit your character set that you're using, and this is what I meant earlier when I was saying, oh, this, you can keep track of it, and that's right here. Notes are a great thing. You, we spend so much time grinding that maybe we forget something, or maybe something doesn't go according to plan one time, and it just slips your mind, but now we can keep track of our notes, yay! So to give you an example of what I did is I went to uh, Ultra Imps, which is a duo spot, and I grinded it with a buddy of mine from the guild, I got all my loot in here, it was only one hour. I hit my, or clicked my uh, character set that I'm using. And then for my notes, I put in that I did a duo with this person who was 269 Noover. Uh, we got two weapons that he took. I had zero deaths, he died once, and we had no duel for spots, no interruptions in our one hour grind. Put everything in here and it calculated my silver per hour after taxes. Once you've inputted everything, don't forget to hit save so that everything will be inputted properly. Something else that's very cool is this filter. You can filter it by the buffs you've used, the classes you've played, and how long ago it was done. Uh, I've done nothing today, so it's filtered and showed me nothing. This is useful, but I'm, I'm not using it right now because I don't have anything. Uh, then you can go over here and this is being worked on, so expect bugs. This little pie chart is a grind spot analytics, and it will show you that there's a bug. Earlier, it was telling me, oh, because I have no sessions. Okay, wait, uh, past seven days. There we go. This is being worked on, so expect bugs. Covidus I took up, which is the trash loot at Ultra Imps, took up 50% of my silver per hour, and everything else was the next other 50%. So it's kind of a good way to see a breakdown of where your money is coming from. Cool. All right, from there, that is everything. And that is the quick breakdown of Garmoth.com. I hope you guys found this information useful. And if you did, please don't forget to show some love to the awesome developer who is working hard to make this great for us. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time.